This is Mu'adh radiallahu anhu asking the Prophet وسلم, the question that all of you are asking right now. And that is, Mu'adh radiallahu anhu is asking on our behalf, قُلْتُ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ أَخْبِرْنِي بِعَمَلٍ يُدْخِلُنِي الْجَنَّةِ وَيُبَاعِدُنِي عَنِ النَّارِ He said, O oh Messenger of Allah, Ya Rasulullah, tell me about an action that will enter me into, uh, into Jannah and will distance me from hellfire. Right? Isn't that the question you're asking? Indeed it is. Qala, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٌ He said, indeed you've asked for something enormous. It's an enormous question. Right? وَإِنَّهُ يَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ He said, it's something enormous, but indeed it's very easy for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it easy for. And so the Prophet ﷺ said, this is how you do it. How to get to Jannah and how to stay away from hellfire. تَعَبُدُ Allah, لَا تُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا That you worship Allah and you associate no partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَتُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ And you establish, underline, establish your salah. Establish, like your salah is a pillar. If anybody saw your salah, would they go, man, your salah is a pillar? Would they say that about your salah? And for most people, they'd be like, no, my pillar, my salah is like a wavy quirk in the in the water or something like that, right? No, this is like established salah. And this is props for the um, you know, the older uncles that come to the masjid. In every masjid, there's a group of uncles that are always there. If you go to the masjid, you know who we're talking about. There are four or five of them that they don't, you know, they might not attend the lectures. Not they're always there in the masjid. Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, they're always there. They're old, they're always in the masjid. There is a group of people that always do that. Inshallah ta'ala, they're amongst those who establish their salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enter them into Jannat al-Firdaus. وَتُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ وَتُؤْتِ الزَّكَاةِ That you give your zakah. وَتَسُومَ رَمَضَانِ And that you would fast in Ramadan. وَتَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ And that you would do hajj to the bait, uh, hajj to the Kaaba. Um, from my experience with zakah, people fast in Ramadan, alhamdulillah, people have the intention to go for hajj, alhamdulillah. When it comes to zakah, a lot of people um, don't know the fiqh of zakah. And so I would remind you here that this is one of the characteristics of the people that go to Jannah, and this is from, they give their zakah, you might actually be surprised when you start learning about zakah that many years may have passed and you haven't paid zakah. And it is fard upon you to learn. Right? Talabul ilm faridah. Seeking knowledge is fard. Then the Prophet ﷺ said, ثم قال, ألا أدلك على أبواب الخير? The Prophet ﷺ said to Mu'ad. So Mu'ad asked him this question. This will get you into Jannah, what we just said here. And then the Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not tell you the doors of goodness? And Mu'ad radiallahu uh, and um, Shall I not tell you the doors of goodness? The Prophet ﷺ said, As-sawmu Jannah. وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِئُ الْخَطِيئَةَ كَمَا يُطْفِئُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ وَالصَّلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ فِي جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ So the Prophet ﷺ said three doors of goodness. He said number one, الصَّلَاةُ أَسَّوْمُ جُنَّةً Which is like you're fasting and it's going to protect you. So a person, you know, fasting Mondays, fasting Thursdays, fasting Ayyamul Bid. Ayyamul Bid are like the 13th, 14th and 15th of the month of the Hijri calendar. Right? Fasting those days. Those are days that are voluntary. Yet you're still fasting. Right? It's voluntary, but you're doing it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the sweetest things that you can do is when you pray or when you do something that's voluntary. It's not fard. Obviously, you're doing your fard, and that's the number one thing that will bring you close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the fard. And then after that, the voluntary actions. To do more and more and more of those voluntary actions, and you'll come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said, وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِئُ الْخَطِيئَ كَمَا يُطْفِئُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ That the sadaqa, um, it extinguishes the sin the same way that water extinguishes fire. So we were talking about even the book, when you want your sins like wiped away, you take sadaqa, if you've committed a sin, one of the ways to get it wiped away is through sadaqa. So a person commits a sin, I've committed the sin, here's $5,000 to the masjid, here's $5,000 to these orphans, here's $5,000 to this and that, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me. And so the person is giving their sadaqah in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive their sins. And the third one that the Prophet said, وَصَلَاةُ الرَّجُلِ فِي جَوْفِ اللَّيْلِ 
and the prayer of the man, prayer of, of, of that Muslim, in the middle of the night, Jawf is the middle portion. It's interesting, I was, I was talking about like Qiyamul Layl, and one of the brothers, he told me, he said, doctors say that um, that's when you're in your deepest sleep, and it's not good to disturb a person when they're in their deep sleep like that. I said, that be, that's because that, that doctor who told you that is a kafir. <laughs> That's what he's saying, that the worst time to wake up is in the middle of the night. And, Allah, and the Prophet ﷺ said, this is abwab al khayr When your body won't let you wake up at that time, your heart is what wakes you up. right? And that's why not too many people wake up at that time. Your heart is what's going to wake you up. And then the Prophet ﷺ mentioned uh, the verse of uh, in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, the Prophet sallallahu after saying this, he, sa- he mentioned the verse of the, from the Qur'an, tatajafa, that their limbs forsake their beds of sleep. Junubuhum anil madaja. Why are they abandoning their bed? Why are they abandoning their bed? It's like between me, me and you bed, you know, like forget you. I've forsaken you. Tatajafa <laughs> junubuhum anil And they say this like, subhanAllah, like, Imam Nawi rahimahullah, They'll say like how many years that he didn't sleep on a bed. Did he sleep? Yes, he slept. He's a human being. Where did he sleep? On his books. That's where he slept. So this knowledge, remember we were talking about like uh, the Quran and memorizing the Quran. We were like, I want to memorize the Quran. These scholars wrote volumes and volumes and volumes. It didn't happen through osmosis as we said. They actually did the works and he planted the seeds. Imam Nawi rahimahullah, he used to like, he would work, 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 work until he'd become drowsy. And so he'd actually, he'd fall asleep on the books. His head would go down on the books. He'd sleep. And then he'd wake up from the books. Make wudu, pray, continue studying, continue learning, and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was his bed. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the characteristics of these people of Jannah that their, their limbs forsake their beds. And al madaji'i yad'una rabbahum. They make dua to Allah khawfan wa tama'a. In fear of Allah. So they're making dua. Yes, they have fear. So that's why when we're talking about the verses of hellfire, nobody's, you don't come to those verses and try to just avoid it. No, you take it in fear that you might be one of those people. And I would be one of those people. You take it in fear and tama, I love the word tama because it's like what's the what's the translation for tama? Let me see what the guy says here. He said hope. Tama is not hope. Yeah, you could say tama is like in the Arabic. If someone said it, they'd say it, it might almost almost be a derogatory term. Like it's like tama. He's always on. He's so greedy. He wants everything and so on and so forth. All right. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is praising these people that they have tama. They don't want to like, they're not humble. I want to be like the last person in Jannah. I don't mind being at the back or something like that. No, they want the highest level of Jannah. Did we mention this about Umar ibn Abdul Aziz? Did I mention that? Um, 